Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates. For our second video today, we're going to have a look at the latest for the UK outlook. It's looking, it's, well, it's been very unsettled recently with a lot of heavy showers and thunderstorms. There's still going to be some of that around, but it's looking a little bit warmer and drier, especially for the south in parts of England and Wales, for the middle of this week, before it does look like unsettled weather is going to bring a turning. Unfortunately though, for those in the north and in parts of Ireland as well, it does look like this unsettled weather is not really going anywhere. So do remember if you enjoyed my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, links in the description. Also do check out my video I did shortly before the release of this video, um, where I did an update on the uh, hurricane situation in the Atlantic. We have some two pretty decent disturbances, which could be troubling the Caribbean and Florida over the next sort of five to seven days. So do check out that video. I'll link it in the top right um, hand uh, corner. So do check that out as it could start to have impacts on the UK's weather in the next 10 to 14 days as it interacts with the jet stream. Could bring some hotter air up or could bring some very stormy weather towards the UK. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. So we do first have a look at the radar. We've had another day of a lot of sunshine. But, but also a lot of showers and thunderstorms, especially in the north. Now, there were quite a few showers and thunderstorms in England and Wales, but they are now clearing, and you can see a lot of them are out um, in the North Sea or heading towards Netherlands now, and many have just generally dissipated. Towards northern England and Scotland, where we've had the yellow thunderstorm warning, we still have some of these showers going off. Now, they aren't as heavy as they were earlier, and, th and there is really no thundery activity within them anymore, but there's still a lot of heavy rain around, and it's going to be adding to rainfall totals over the last two or three days, with some areas seeing well over 100 millimetres, if not getting up towards 150 millimetres of rain in a few spots over the last three or four days. Some areas um, uh, have seen pretty much constant yellow warnings. We've had a yellow warning for thunderstorms um, since Wednesday, and we have another one tomorrow. Um, so very significant issues for six days straight of thunderstorm warnings. Um, so, yeah, still some significant weather to come around tomorrow in a few locations, but it's generally looking um, like things are going to be settling down just a tad in England and Wales. We also do have some rain and some showers in the southwest, which are going to impact especially southern areas, sort of the M4 line southwards through this evening and into tomorrow. But by Tuesday, Wednesday, things are looking a little bit better. So if we first do have a look at the weather, weather warnings, we do at the moment have those thunderstorm warnings in the north, of course, Northern Ireland, North England and Scotland. And those all expire across this evening around midnight. We do have a warning tomorrow from midday to 9 p.m. for sort of eastern parts of sort of or southeastern parts of Scotland. We have heavy showers and thunderstorms may cause flooding and some disruption. Heavy moving showers, uh, heavy slow moving showers with some thundery downpours will develop tw uh, with 20 to 30 millimeters in a short space of time, perhaps 50 to 80 millimeters over several hours. And of course, adding on to the rainfall totals we've seen over the last three, four, five days could be some surface water flooding, of course. Very localised warning, quite a small area, um, but still could be some significant conditions as those showers do continually packing in over the north. If we do run through the long term outlook before we have a look at the UK Met Office, uh, run have a look at the rain and the potential warmer weather over the next few days. If we do have a look at the uh, GFS, you can see that low pressure system that's been given, giving us a lot of the rain over the last few days is slowly filling in and clearing out into the North Sea. But this low pressure that's out in the Atlantic kind of stalls a little bit. It is still driving in southwesterly winds for Ireland and north in England. But for the south and the southeast, by Wednesday, or by at least by Tuesday uh, midday, if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, some warmer air is starting to be dragged up, potentially the 10 degree isotherm by Wednesday. Now, it's not hot air by any means, of the air, air, by any means, um, but it's much warmer air than we've seen at the moment than we're seeing at the moment and could give temperatures into the mid 20s with sunshine around it could feel quite warm compared to what we've had recently now it is very brief as it's being brought up by the south westerly winds and uh, by thursday showers are starting to come in and that low pressure is starting to move through scotland and sweep weather from so through so it's only sort of a two or three day sort of drier warmer period and it's really pretty much exclusively in the south and the east um of the British Isles. So 
we'll just we'll just keep an eye on it. Um, but it's looking like we could be seeing, seeing some surprising, surprisingly dry and warm weather. And remember, we are still in August, so whenever the sun does get out for a prolonged period of time, it's 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 always going to bring up the temperatures um, relatively high to mid twenties or even high 20s. But beyond that, as we're towards the weekend, you see westerly winds taking back over. We are sort of in between weather systems, no, no real big high pressure or no real big low pressures dominating, sort of in between. So it isn't going to be an actual deluge of rain, but there's still going to be a lot of heavy showers and potentially thunderstorms around, of course. Beyond that, the low pressure just continue milling around, and it does look like unsettled weather is going to continue after this brief warm and dry period we may see this week. And there's we towards day 10, looking pretty miserable indeed, um, with low pressure over the top of the UK. High pressure always trying to build in uh, as an extension of the resource high, and it eventually does it towards um, right towards the end of the run. And we could be seeing some warm conditions there, with the 10 degree ice firm spreading across the whole country, could give pretty dry and fine weather for many areas, potentially except, uh, not really in the north, far northwest, as we still have a bit of a westerly wind taking over. But for many areas... Right towards the end of this run, towards the last third of August, could be turning a little bit drier and warmer, if if not a little bit hotter if we do drag up some warmer air up from Iberia. So it is looking encouraging right in the long term, but of course it's very uncertain and we never really take anything beyond 240 hours that literally, um, as is, as we'll have a look at the ensembles in a minute, and there is a lot of scatter around, uh, so it's very difficult to really pinpoint one scenario, um, but up until day 10, it's looking like it's going to be continually uh, unsettled um, from around later this week all the way to day 10. So not looking great if you are a hot and dry weather fan. If you love the showers and the thunderstorms and the nice um, sort of convective skies with photogenic clouds, then this probably is um, great conditions for you with warm sunshine, Pretty warm air coming up from the southwest, and a lot of un unstable um, with an unstable atmosphere. We're always going to get some photogenic skies and thunderstorms. So if you do enjoy that, then it does look like that's where that sort of weather is going to be continuing. If we now have a look at the ECMWF, see if that does or how does how that does compare. You see that low out in the Atlantic does drag up southwesterly winds briefly with a bridge of high pressure over the far south and east. You do see we do briefly get a sort of, sort of a wedge of warmer air through sort of Wednesday and Thursday. And it could mean briefly some places on Thursday get up to maybe 26, 27 degrees maybe. But low pressure is going to sweep through, um, especially sort of Thursday evening to Friday. And we're just going to be then going pretty unsettled with another air of low pressure moving in. And then continually areas of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. Now, the war of the air coming in is not in, is not that cold. It's pretty warm, to be honest. Um so if we do see sunshine around, temperatures will, of course, get up as it is August. But with a lot of cloud and settled weather and a lot of showers around, it will never be, you'll never really be too far away um, from a bit of rain. So not looking great. And then right towards day 10, a bit of northern blocking building in with some high heights rising towards Greenland. And that's going to be dragging in more of a north northwesterly wind with air originating from sort of Svalbard and Scandinavia and Iceland up towards Greenland. Um, bringing in some a little bit cooler air, potentially at the surface as well, feeling a little bit chilly in a few locations. So not looking great. But again, day 10, uncertain. So don't look too much into that. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see over the next like day or so, we do have unsettled weather and cooling average temperatures. But you see that big, big pickup to around 10 to 12 degrees at 850 HPA for around two, three days from around the 11th to maybe the 13th, maybe 14th of August, depending on how quickly that low pressure does move in. Well, we do see pretty dry conditions and warm upper air temperatures, which could give temperatures up into the mid 20s. Beyond that, though, temperatures fall back to around average with uh, precipitation spikes returning, things turning very unsettled once again, and you can see again a lot of scatter, and that's why I said you can't, you have to kind of discount that um, drier, warmer on, um, operational run, which does rise to a couple of degrees above average towards the end of the run, as there's so much scatter, and this hasn't really got um, significant support from it, as we've got some going up towards 5th, 14, 16 degrees at 850 HPA, some getting down to 0 degrees at 850 HPA so We'll just have to keep an eye how it does develop. The amount of um, uh, uncertainty in these ensembles, the amount of scatter, just shows you how volatile the atmosphere is at the moment. Um, very difficult to pinpoint exactly what's going to happen. Hopefully, though, 
um, we do see another big ridge of high pressure do, uh, develop over the UK. As I said in my video yesterday, I really would um, kind of like another uh, a few days or at least week of um, warm, dry weather again. It doesn't have to be 30 degrees or so. It could just be low 20s and it will be very pleasant. I just kind of associate the summer with hot, dry weather that we've had over the last few years, but it just seems this summer is coming up very unsettled for many areas. Um, I'm just hoping we do see some um, dry conditions as uh, uh, soon. We'll be in September, October, and we'll be looking at potentially some autumn storms, and then eventually winter, um, where things could be turning a little bit interesting, um, with the potential for snow returning, of course, and I know many people do enjoy snow. But hopefully we do get another uh, sort of blast of warmer, dry weather before the summer is up. At the moment, it's not looking particularly encouraging for that. But we can only hope, and with the amount of sun team ensembles, we can't rule it out at this stage. So we just have to keep an eye on how it does develop. If we do have a look at the 2 meter temperatures, you see over the next day or so, temperature can bring out 20 degrees. But as that warm air does take in, especially in the south and the east, we see temperatures get up to the mid-20s potentially, before dropping down to around 20 degrees as the unsettled weather does return. So we do have a look at the GFS ensembles. We'll briefly go through the precipitation, and then we'll run through the temperatures. So you can see, of course, this evening, we got that rain in southern Scotland. Uh, eventually, will dissipate um, for picking up once again overnight with another band of rain moving through. We've got that heavy rain in the south that's a sweep through overnight to my, into tomorrow morning. And then by tomorrow uh, sort of morning into lunchtime, showers really do take off. And you can see those significant showers in southeast Scotland, and that's why we have that thunderstorm morning in force. But you see many areas seeing quite a few showers, maybe for central England to Wales, maybe northern England as well, and looking a little bit drier. Um, you can see we've had yellow warnings for thunderstorms in some of these areas so looking a little bit dry through monday afternoon um but still wherever you are there's still a decent chance you could see a shower or so but just might we just might not see a massive peppering of showers we've seen in some locations over the last few days as we head through into tuesday early morning you see things do turn drier pretty much for the whole british isles for tuesday afternoon we see showers and thunderstorms take off once again in scotland but for the England and Wales, and even parts of Ireland as well, Tuesday's looking like a pretty decent day with very limited shower activity um, and looking probably quite warm. And we'll have a look at the temperatures in a minute as we do have that brief ridge of high pressure. Through Wednesday, you can see weather fronts trying to push in, but sort of getting halt, uh, stopped at around Wales, southwest England to northern England. And this sort of wedge of eastern half of northern England down through eastern Wales, through central eastern England, that's where we could continue to see warmer weather through Wednesday, potentially Thursday, before the weather front does eventually move through with potentially some drizzle and some uh, some thick cloud moving on it as the weather front really does get halted by that high pressure but the low pressure does eventually win out and sort of by thursday evening into friday we're all back in low pressure with westerly winds coming back in potentially still dry in the far southeast as we don't have the low um particularly close but it will be bringing in some fresher air so if we do have a look at the 1.5 meter max temperatures you can see by monday afternoon we're widely seeing potentially 20, 21, 22 degrees in England and Wales, potentially around 16, 17 in Ireland, Northern Ireland, maybe a touch warmer. And then Scotland, of course, a little bit cooler with more showers around maybe 15 to 18, 19 degrees or so. By Tuesday, things are looking a little bit better. And by the afternoon, by around 4 p.m., we could be seeing again 22, maybe 24 degrees in the far southeast um, where we do escape showers um, and cloud. Further north, again, with more cloud and showers around, it's probably looking a little bit cooler. By Wednesday, things are looking, um, once again, pretty pleasant in the southeast, potentially around 23, 24, maybe 25 degrees. But the difference is, even though these temperatures are only maybe a couple degrees warmer than we've seen recently, we're going to see a lot more sunshine and less cloud. So it is going to mean uh, these temperatures are going to feel warmer than they actually are Um so even though it's only 23, 24 degrees, it could feel a little bit warmer. And of course, we could see nice age 26, 27 degrees um, in a few locations. And by Thursday afternoon, again, potentially warm in the east with 24, 25 degrees um, before the weather fronts do sweep through. And by sort of Friday time, we are still a little bit warm in the far east, maybe 22, 23. But those 
cloud and showers coming off the Atlantic, um, potentially going to bring more cloud in, so it may be feeling a little bit cooler. So temperature not exceptional, but it's warmer than we've seen recently, and it's warmer than average, because remember, in sort of July, August, the average high is around 21 degrees. So seeing 23, 24, 25 degrees is warmer than average. So hopefully it's going to be pleasant, at least for a few days, and we can enjoy a little bit of outdoors weather, as we've had it being pretty uh, unpleasant so far, um, in the well, at least in the last week or so. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my National Hurricane Centre video from earlier, and I'll see you again for another video soon.